Let's talk about requests for evidence. Hi, my name is Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. So three words you never want to hear when you apply for an immigration benefit in the United States is a request for evidence. Now, when you file your initial application, you are doing your very best to submit as much evidence as you can to overwhelm USCIS with proof that your application has to be approved. You want to give them so much evidence and so many documents that make it crystal clear that you are entitled to the immigration benefit that you are seeking, that you are applying for citizenship, that you deserve citizenship, that if you're applying for a green card, that your marriage is 100% real, that there can be no doubt that you are married to your spouse, that you got married in good faith, and that you uh, have filed everything that they wanted in order to approve the case. You want it to be a slam dunk. You want it to be a close call. You don't want them to be sending you the dreaded request for evidence. So what is a request for evidence? Well, when USCIS gets your application, they review it. And when they review it, sometimes they find that you haven't submitted everything that they wanted. You haven't submitted them enough marital evidence or enough biographical evidence. They're not sure you are who you say you are, or they're not sure that you have the capacity to marry, or they're not sure that this marriage that you've submitted is real, or that it wasn't for an immigration purpose, or for whatever reason. USCIS has many, many reasons and many different ways to send you a request for evidence. Now, the bad thing about requests for evidence is that cases are taking so long right now that if you, if you receive a request for evidence, that for the most part, this is going to set your case back by a month or two at the very least. Of course, all the time between when they send the request for evidence and when you send it back to them, all that is lost time. So if they send you a request for evidence and you take 45 days to get it back to them, that's 45 days longer that it's going to take for your application to be approved at the very least. Now, in reality, when they issue a request for evidence, they're on to the next case. They're not thinking about you anymore. They're not thinking about you until you send back that response, they open the response, they put it in the right file, they compare it to where it's supposed to be, it hopefully gets to where it's supposed to be, and then the officer has some times where they go back to look at the cases in which they have issued an RFE and then they address it. Now, we talked in a recent video about the fact that we are seeing couples get requests for evidence or notice of intent to deny about the marriage evidence before the interview. Now, this is a new tactic by USCIS that we haven't really seen before. So a request for evidence can come at the beginning of the case. It can come in the middle of the case. It can come after the interview. And there are a lot of requests for evidence that get issued at an interview. So a lot of times you'll go to the interview and the officer will say, well, I'm not sure if I have everything I need to approve or deny this case. I might be asking you for a little bit of additional information. And that would come in the form of a request for evidence. Now, they might give you that request for evidence, that RFE, that's what we call them here in the office, RFE. We might receive that request for evidence at the interview itself. More likely, the officer is going to want to review everything and send you that request for evidence later. Now, like I said, you definitely don't want to receive a request for evidence. And in your mind, when you're putting your application together and when you're sending it out the door, you're like, how do I make this RFE proof? How do I make sure that this case, the one that I'm submitting, isn't going to get a request for evidence? Now, even our office gets requests for evidence from time to time. Some officers are very RFE happy. They're very glad to give lots of requests for evidence. Now, there's also a little bit of racial profiling. If you're from certain countries, you can expect RFEs of a certain sort. For instance, if you're from Nigeria, you can expect that they're going to really take a hard look at your marriage history because there's been so many people that have come to the United States from Nigeria as married persons getting divorced either back in Nigeria or in the United States. So you can expect that if you're applying for a green card based on marriage here in the United States and you're doing it based on a marriage that occurred here but that you were pri previously married, you can count on getting a pretty substantial request for evidence. Some requests for evidence can be responded to very quickly. Sometimes they'll ask for the, the medical. And when you receive that kind of an RFE, you're probably pretty happy if you're applying for a green card because that most likely means you're not going to get an interview. But for the most part, most RFEs you don't want to get, and most RFEs are causing delays to your case. But it's also a roadmap as to where things might be headed. What do I mean by that? Well, if you receive a request for evidence about the validity of the marriage, the strength of the marriage, the degree of evidence that you've submitted in support of the marriage, if you get an RFE like that, you can be damn sure that you're going to receive a lot of scrutiny at your green card interview. You're going to get asked a lot of questions. Hey, Jim, 
Why did you only submit a little bit of marital evidence? You guys have been married for a year and a half. Why so little paperwork? Why so few photos? Why don't you have more here? I would expect more after having been married for a year and a half that you have a lot more evidence and you only sent us this much. So the RFE is actually a helpful tool if you know what it means, if you pay attention, if you think through, what does this mean? Why are they asking for this? What else can I bring to the interview if I get one that would even support the fact that this is a valid marriage even more? So the request for evidence you generally don't want to get it. It is better than a notice of intent to deny. That can come after you submit your RFE. And the one last thing I want to say about requests for evidence is this. Sometimes USCIS sends you boilerplate language, which means big chunks of language taken from other regulations or from other requests for evidence that might not be exactly what they're asking for. We see this a lot, for instance, with the I-864, the Affidavits of Support. We see a lot of times where USCIS will... Um, send you this big chunk of, of question and you expect you to interpret what it means and to give them what it is that they need or that they want. So hopefully you won't get an RFE. If you do get an RFE with that boilerplate language, you might need help from a lawyer. You might need help deciphering or uncovering what it is exactly that they're after. Um, and if you want our help in responding to a request for evidence or if you have a case that's gone off the rails and you're a little bit worried about it, feel free to give us a call at 314-961-8200. You can email us info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Now, if you don't know this already, we do have our YouTube channel that you should subscribe to. That way, whenever we go live, which we do two or three times a week on our Immigration Answer Show, or whenever we post a new video, you'll be the first one to know about it. Also, we have our Immigrant Home Facebook group where there's thousands of immigrants who have gone through the process or are in the process and who have any questions or want to discuss like what's going on at my embassy or what are you seeing in processing times from this service center. People are in our Facebook group every day talking about that kind of stuff. So feel free to join us. And like I said, if you want to hire us, give us a call, 314-961-8200, and have a great day.